Let's move on now to the first stage on pathology in peri-implant tissues, which is peri-implant mucositis. Peri-implant mucositis was addressed in a review paper produced by Lisa Heights Mayfield and Giovanni Salvi. The major key points to bring forward on peri-implant mucositis are the following. Peri-implant mucositis is an inflammatory lesion in the soft tissue surrounding an implant, and there should be no loss of supporting bone or continuing marginal bone loss. In addition, peri-implant mucositis is characterized by a well-defined inflammatory lesion lateral to a junctional or pocket epithelium and with an infiltrate which is rich in vascular structures, plasma cells and lymphocytes. Furthermore, the inflammatory infiltrate does not extend apical of the epithelial extension. That is, it does not extend apical of a pocket epithelium or into the supracrestal connective tissue zone. And this is a very important observation as this is the borderline between the mucositis condition and peri-implantitis. Peri-implant mucositis, from a clinical standpoint, should be viewed with the main features of bleeding on probing, which is far more important than visible signs, because the visible signs of urethema, swelling or separation, are features that may be present in addition to bleeding on probing, but bleeding or probing is the most important feature. An increase in probing depth is often observed in the presence of peripheral mucositis because of the swelling or a decrease in probing resistance. Please also remember that there is strong evidence from both animal and human experimental studies that plaque is the etiological factor for peri-implant mucositis. And finally, we also have evidence that peri-implant mucositis can resolve, and the source here are experimental studies in humans. Case definition of peri-implant mucositis is straightforward and simple. It includes two aspects. The first part is bleeding on probing, and it should be bleeding on probing with or without increased probing depth as compared to previous examinations. The second part is absence of bone loss. That is, there should be no bone loss beyond the crystal bone level changes resulting from initial bone remodeling. To bring information regarding recommendations for epidemiology, the research part is to use the same criteria and day-to-day -day clinical practice in epidemiological studies. Now let's move to the next stage, which is peri-implantitis.